Hello people, welcome back to the podcast. Got a good few new listeners recently um, off the back of John's podcast and Adam's podcast and Kerry as well. Kerry's clips done really well, the dietitian. So for those of you that have been listening to the guest episodes every now and then, I like to just, you know, speak one-on-one to the camera and, and, and the mic and do a little solo episode. Usually you become very strange very quickly and you'll you you get an idea into how crippling cripplingly weird my brain can be at times because as it, people who listen to the show will know, I can go off in branches and who knows where those branches end up. Usually somewhere weird. Usually somewhere about me talking about Viagra. Viagra. Viagra? Viagra. Anyway. I put a wee reel up on Instagram the other day where I pretty much just had a rant. I'm fucking, do you know what? I'm so sick of pretty much all the social media, I, but I'm so addicted at the same time. I have a severe addiction to my phone, but I hate being on my phone. It's something I live with every day. It's something all of us live with every day. But I'm trying to, I, listen, I've tried every strategy to break my phone addiction, but I, I just I just don't know how to do it. I just, if someone knows, please tell me. But anyway, one of the only things I've managed to implement has been muting everyone on Instagram. It genuinely has made my life better. You don't know it at the time, but I just see what other people say on, like, or like I'll be sitting next to someone with like, oh, did you see such and such as post and they're all pregnant and all that? I'm like, no, I didn't see it. And they're like, oh, yeah, it made me feel like I'm really far behind in life. And I'm like, oh, well, I've never seen it. <laughs> and it's great. I don't, want, I don't want to see anything on social media. But unless I type it in and deliberately watch it, I don't want to see it anymore. But anyway, yes, that's what today's show is going to be about. This is still the intro. I split the solo episodes up into little segments so they're easier to listen to and so my branches don't get too long and I can't recover from them. Um, So yeah, it's just going to be some segments about social media itself, what mutant people has actually done for me, and then probably just lose my mind and rant quite a lot about stuff because I'm very just, just, I'm just fucking sick. Of quite a lot of the things I see that PTs are doing. Not even really PTs. I'm quite in support of PTs these days, but more the ones that, you know, try to make as much money as possible. And then the ones that are like coaching coaches, even though they've never coached people. Those sort of guys, you know, just arseholes, um, to be honest. So there might be a few of that sprinkled in between. Now, the episodes are out every Tuesday at seven in the morning. I like to remind people of that. I actually have more Apple podcast listeners than I realised. So if anyone is listening on that, are we reviewing some an an eight hundred word essay about how class arm would be fantastic? Are we rating on Spotify and are we like and subscribing YouTube? You know, wouldn't go amiss. Um let's get into today's show. So I've always had a sort of deep hatred for what social media really is. But the problem also is I've always enjoyed making videos. So when I was like 14, I used to do this sport called freestyle football. And I used to just film myself, make like montages or whatever. And I'd put them on the internet. They would get like 50 views. But I just used to enjoy the whole making something and putting it out there. I also used to like, this is quite sad, you know. I used to make like, Run, you see if you type in Cristiano Ronaldo and like there's just like montages that are clearly made by little virgins that was me I made I made one of, I remember coming into like second year of school being in like maths or whatever in the morning and I'd made a Cristiano Ronaldo video of all his highlights and I'd spent about three days doing it and I remember looking at my phone in school and it had like 500,000 views when I'd uploaded it the night before. I think it ended up getting a million or something and then took down for copyright, which I'm still annoyed about. But that was my, I always liked making videos. 
but it was de- like you weren't quite i was getting massive dopamine dopamine hits from that which is strange because it was it was ronaldo <laughs> It wasn't the face of the video, and it was Ronaldo that was getting the views. But I thought to myself, no, they like the editing, you know, the way I flashed when you've done that trick. And that was what they liked. But I would, so I've all, because I like video editing and I've done it for years and I've got quite good at like making videos, obviously, then that, I, like, if I have any sort of intelligence at all, and I'm not sure I do, that I should be making videos. If I want to do any kind of business because it's a skill I've got 13, 14 years of experience in, really. I am at social media changes all the time, type of videos change all the time. But like my head has always thought about make like if I hear a song, I literally think about making videos with it. It's weird. That's just how my head's always worked. So it would make no sense for me not to do that. Now, when I used to do freestyle, I used to perform at events over the like over the country. I used to do like workshops with kids and stuff, and I used to use videos of events or like me even training and stuff to get clients or get people want me wanting to hire me. So I fell into social media. That was when I remember when Instagram first brought out and being able to do videos and it changed the game for not just me but like freestylers in general because people hadn't really seen it i know instagram were being able you were able to upload videos of you and it was only 15 seconds so that really changed everything in terms like being able to make money from freestyle so i started going down that rabbit hole and i was gaining followers doing that and uh, then you were like get into events and stuff however i as you can probably tell like i I can come across as like a grumpy old man that is stuck in like the 60s even though i was born in 1995 i type of guy that you know i've hated clubs since the day i started drinking that's me i'm that guy that's like remember the good old days even though I, i was 17 that's me so i remember just getting infuriated by how other people were using these videos so the name the game really what what with freestyle what people were trying to do is try to make everything they were doing look better than what it was which is what we were all telling each other to do but then it just was getting too far you know i remember we went to ukraine right this all this will all sound clash right because what we done was pretty cool but it wasn't as cool as what everyone made out so we went to ukraine for the champions league final and we performed at an event before the champions league final liverpool against real madrid it was like this big corporate event it was all like fifa ufa whatever people at it and then like gary lineker was hosting it i think Shevchenko was one of no fuck knows it was like an old Real Madrid player and an old Liverpool player maybe McManaman or something like we're on a couch and then we performed as they were finished their wee talk show you know like Roy Keane and all that do like it was like a live talk show and then when um Gary Lineker came off he actually said hi to me and I was like all right mate I'm absolutely shitting myself and that was about the coolest thing that happened there was three or four days where we had to rehearse for that show we were only getting paid 500 quid for that so i know that sounds like a lot of money in like a working week but considering we flew to another country you were there for four days you were spending all your own money no spending money um and you were getting paid 500 quid most other jobs you'd be getting like two grand at least for something like that because this isn't like a monday friday job i don't have that the next week you and like only fucking maybe 20 people in the uk were capable of doing that job so like you you overcharge for it because it's not a monday friday not overcharge for it but you charge more than like whatever you're making 12 pound an hour 
because I might not have had work for two weeks after that. That's the way freestyle sort of worked because it's a very niche thing. And how many people want a fucking guy that can jug pointlessly juggle balls up and down? Um, so we went like on a on a shoot. We went like ten hours without like food, and they brought in crisps and stuff. They weren't really like feeding us properly. They weren't really telling us what to do. And then I remember we were like, compl- we're, we were like complaining because we were like, here we can't just keep rehearsing. This is very physical. It's very physical activity. And you like, there's n- there's no shops near us. We can't even go get ourselves food. Like we're going to all start passing out. This feels like a concentration camp, you know? Um, And they went away and got McDonald's. And like, we were like, what are you doing? Like, why can't we all just go out like, we get the food we want and you have all came back with like Big Macs and I I hate I'm, I have a fear of mayonnaise and stuff and I genuinely I was not being you know what I think I'm like you know think, thinking I'm more than this or whatever I was just like mate I'm fucking starving and you've came back and the only food you have is covered in mayonnaise which I have a fear of so now I'm still fucking starving and I'm scared you know so we're getting underpaid and getting treated pretty badly. Most jobs you did get treated quite well, um, but they were treating us like fucking scum of the earth. Anyway, one of the other boys who was gaining quite a big following on social media, on the day of the event, we get picked up in this like horrendous like minibus that was about 30 years old, and then the guy was like weirdly driving us a like the the event the venue was only like 15 minutes away from our hotel we stayed in a shiter of a hotel as well like absolute like a minging hotel the cheapest one they could find basically then this guy was going round in circles and when a ukrainian man who looks dodgy as fuck is just taking you round and round in circles when you know the venue is only 15 minutes away you start to get a wee bit scared anyway we're on this shit bus and i turn round and one of the other freestylers who's a lot younger he takes like there's like we're on these like dusty old seats right and he goes up there's like an emblem like a logo on the seat that obviously looks like ukrainian or foreign right he takes his phone up to the logo changes the filter before he takes a picture takes a picture of this emblem and then he writes underneath it VIP access to the Champions League final tonight and I watched them do it and I went we are not going to the Champions League final this bus feels as if we could die at any second I feel like I, the rust is that bad I could literally fall through the bottom of this van right now we are going on as soon as this event finishes which we have been paid pennies for. I've probably spent more money being here than we are making. Oh yeah, actually, I had to go to London to get my flight. So I was like to the guy, can you at least cover my, the fact that like, I live in Glasgow, mate, the flight's from London. That cost me like 100 quid to get to Heathrow Airport. And I had to put myself up in a hotel the night before. So 150 quid of that money was gone on just getting to my flight. So I made nothing doing that job and he had to do something similar as well we had to stay in a hotel because the flight was at like six in the morning and i was like our flight is an hour before kickoff so not only do we not have a ticket for the game we are in the air when the game is on and you've just wrote that we have vip access to the game tonight which we don't i would like to clear that up we absolutely don't and from then on I just could, it was the first time that I had witnessed somebody do something so mental and so just sheer lies that from then on, I genuinely think I've developed this like new fucking perspective on when people post as in I'm always like, right, what about this is bollocks? Do you know what I mean? Now when people like people post, people get a new relationship and they're, they post their boyfriend all the time, I'm like, why are you doing that for, mate? You know, what 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 are you doing that for? Cause there's usually a, a hidden reason behind it. 
they want it to make they want to make it look like they have the perfect relationship because they don't and that's the type of thing and also let's just call myself out shall we right how much of information of this this story should i disclose hmm right okay so i got approached to do a show <laughs> should i disclose all of this hmm i got approached to do a show ah in front of prince harry right okay so 90 percent, 80 percent. oh i'll disclose it all oh right a wee bit get myself ready so they wanted me to do it for free and um it was in aberdeen did i get money for this yeah right this is what happened right so the guy was like yeah and the people used to come at you with these sort of fucking offers all the time like oh prince harry is going to be we're going to be doing it at uh what's that some gordon university in aberdeen it's like a charity event um and charity was the mate i hate charity companies not gonna lie they all they try to do is get people to do things for free behind the name of charity yet all of them are getting paid and they just try use services and stuff and go oh yeah it's for charity and i go yeah you are you volunteering for this phone call no, I think you're getting paid, so fuck off. That's, that's the name of the game. For me, without look, the charities used to be the worst, just, just to try use and abuse the life out of you. Um. Anyway, he goes, yeah, so Pr Prince Harry could be at this event and you might be able to uh, uh, meet him. Um. So if you can get to fucking this university, then whatever um and i was like yeah how much what's like i charge 300 quid or whatever to be to do a show and like then teach kids or whatever and i was like oh yeah well prince harry's gonna be there so yeah it'll be free and i was like nah no i don't like that and i was like i'm well i definitely get to meet prince harry and he's like oh we can't guarantee that and i was like so you want me to get a free hour train to aberdeen do a show for free and then go home but and not meet Prince Harry, and he was like, "You might meet Prince Harry." And I was like, "What the fuck is this? What is this shit? You want me to just take a day out of my life just to fucking do stuff for free for you? Fuck off!" Anyway, I negotiated as a, 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 a the businessman I am. I said, "I can bear in mind I was like nineteen, twenty at this point. If you pay for my travel." And that and can guarantee me to get a picture with Prince Harry, I'm in. And we, we settled on that deal. Now, this is the part I didn't want to disclose. I've kind of outed myself quite a bit here. This picture is on the internet. Prince ha So before Prince Harry, about two days before, I got clean on it. As on it as you can get. I got absolutely obliterated which you're allowed to do as a 19 year old you know this is finding myself so i got whatever put away 12 pints i also let's not get into details but something happened to my neck it was some sort of bruising came around my neck i was i don't know i fell over yeah i i fell anyway i wasn't very happy about it because I was planning on using and abusing this picture of Prince Harry for my business. I was planning on plastering it everywhere, looking pretty good, not giving a fuck what Prince Harry looks like, just sticking him on all my social media going, I performed in front of Prince Harry, we spoke, we get along, we're on first name terms, I've got his number and I'm going out with him next week. That was my plan, to make it look like, you know, I'm a big superstar. Um, but then I fell and it hurt my neck um, and it was quite far up my neck so I, I was like you're going to be able to see in this, the pictures so I found the only item of clothing I had that kind of went up to the top of my neck and it was like a Scotland tracksuit it was the only thing I could like zip up and it would cover my fall so then I went up to Aberdeen 
they were he was pretty much just walking around the campus um and i was like because most of the time you go to these events and you would like they would have a speaker and you would do a show and the guy the guy was an arsehole man i can't remember his name but he was a fucking wank and he was like he was he was just being so fucking uh condescending he walked me around to like the back of the uni i was, I was genuinely next to like the bins and he was like he put some cones around me <laughs> and he just left me with like he was like yeah i just want you to teach these kids some tricks and then when prince harry comes around just do like a minute show and then so i just also the, all of these kids were insane they were mental so i, I just got left for about an hour with these 20 insane kids from Aberdeen just putting balls off each other I'm like 19 as well still very probably slightly hung over just sitting with giving myself like a, a double chin try to hide my neck and I'm like trying to teach these wee kids and they're just calling me a, a prick and all this and I'm like you're a wee fucking wee Jay and I'm like oh my god what am I doing with my life I mean like, when is my next pint anyway pr- then I see Prince Harry coming around. He's just got cameras all around him. I start doing a wee show. Prince Harry glances at it as he keeps on because they had like stations. As he walks to like the next station, he just glances at me, walks by, and then after that, like, as soon as he walked by, I just stopped what I was doing. I was like, okay, is that because they were like, yeah, we'll get you a picture. We can't hundred percent guarantee it. But we'll try get you a picture. So as soon as he walked past, I was like, I'm not getting the picture. And I'm absolutely done with these fucking insane kids. Then we come. He go, he's finished. And then the guy comes and he's like, can you do this for another hour? And I was like, absolutely not. Can I get my picture with Prince Harry? And he's like, oh, yeah, like he is actually going to do it. So I come in back into the uni. He actually is like, comes up to me, shakes my hand, he was like, that was class, and I was like, thank you, you definitely didn't watch, and then uh, spoke to him for maybe 45 seconds, very nice, down-to-earth guy, don't know about the whole Megan thing, but he was actually pretty nice, took the picture with him, uh, put my my head back into my chest to cover my neck again, and that picture went everywhere, it went everywhere, all over Facebook, Instagram, I was like, I have... I just perform just done my biggest event, guys, in front of Prince Harry himself. He said it was amazing. He said everyone should hire him. Top class entertainment w- would recommend. He's coming to the Royals uh, birthday party. He did tell me that he he's against the Royals, but sound guy. Um, and I and I used and abused that picture. I actually put, I remember I put a hundred quid behind the picture as a facebook ad um that's how that's how tragic this situation really was and when i put 100 quid behind the facebook ad a boy in the year above me in school wrote on underneath the picture and it got a lot of likes he wrote underneath the picture fuck the queen and her spawn you heard that correct he wrote, fuck the queen and her spawn. And I liked it. I enjoyed it. I didn't actually actually like it, but I, I liked it. I enjoyed it. It was good it was good humour from him. Um so yeah, that's pretty much how bollocks social media is and how I have like everyone, we've all fell in the trap, especially if you're 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 on social media in that kind of way. Bye. This is but I'm like so anti that, but I wanted to call myself out because it feels quite grim calling other people out because I'm definitely contradicting myself because I've definitely done this one too many times myself. So yeah, um, my neck had recovered from the, uh, and I've never fallen over, fallen over like that again. Okay, this is going to be another section of calling myself out, I reckon. Um, I've, this was meant to be just like about short form content as in this subsection, but I'm going to call myself out again. Now, I've went through a wee phases of burnout this year, and I've, I've realised last year it was for the same reason. 
every time I've grew rapidly on social media, I've actually burned myself out. So I, I to 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 gain followers, I have posted more frequently and done research on the algorithm. Now, these are two things I'd like that aren't me, as in I'm not algorithm friendly. I like to take take my time. I don't like to be too flashy or materialistic. And these are all things that don't really work on social media, you know? Um, especially in the fitness industry, the best way to um, get views is to take your your top off and show your abs. Now that would get views for me because I'd be taking off my top and showing my rolls. So that could be an angle that I might play into in the future. But I've burnt out because you basically lose your identity because it's not actually... When I've posted those videos, it's like not really me. And the annoying thing is you get validated by that. So you end up doing it more. And it's a trap a lot of PTs fall into. It's a, lot, it's a trap I f- fell into myself. When I first started, I quickly realized what was getting me views. It was words like calorie deficit, weight loss, top five, foods that have more calories than you think. These are all the topics that I just kept making videos about because they kept getting views. Also, slagging things off would get me views. Slag off burpees, slag off this, slag off that. There's an element to this that's playing the game that's fine. But when all you do is that, I see people... There's people that have been doing this as long as me that... I still see them making the same videos and that it stops working because you're not teaching it like people don't see any value in it anymore like oh yeah we we know that burpees aren't amazing anymore like what else have you, have you got to say and like I think I'd done that for about a year gained a lot of followers but it didn't do anything but I don't actually think I'm as driven by it I'm not this is gonna this is weirdly gonna sound egotistical but it's not I'm not, I've got over my, got. this is probably the best way to put it, I've got over my insecurities enough for that validation-seeking behaviour not to actually give me that much validation and for me not to actually care about it. So it doesn't do, like getting followers for me doesn't do anything for me. Getting recognised doesn't do anything for me. It actually makes me nauseous sometimes. Because when people come up to you, they always end up driving the conversation. They come up to me and they start speaking to me. I'm like, yeah, you need to ask me questions because I don't know. (laughs) What do we do here? I know nothing. Like, I end up just talking, asking them about their life. They came up to speak to me. I'm like, oh, what do you do? Uh, Nice. And then you end up doing the full conversation. So that always makes me feel weird. And I never know how long to let it last. And st- it's just a strange dynamic, you know. So it actually, chasing that sort of stuff doesn't do anything for me. I don't know how much people have watched, like, the David Beckham documentary. But that's, I don't know if there's just, like, people who have that ability to zoom out and see why you're actually doing something. Because everything, David, if you watch that documentary, and his team have made it, so there is a high probability that they've deliberately filmed it like this so people like me think this so that i'm talking about it on a podcast but everything he does like he'll be like oh, i've done it for my football career whatever and i'm like mm, nah, all, all of that seemed to be for fame or money like every decision you made was fame or money i went to la galaxy because i wanted to like I had this dream to promote football in America. So you got a hundred and fifty million pound. You know? Oh, you wanted no. Oh you were I even think it's like borderline his relationship with Posh Specs is like Posh Specs. <laughs> Posh specs, specky posh, Sp- posh specky cunt, um, Tory bastard. Anyway, she, 
I even think he went out with her fame. Like, and that, that's a wee bit of human nature. So it takes a lot of, what's the word? It takes a lot of like reflection and understanding of oneself to know that's what you're doing. Um, and I'm not saying it's always all bad, but a lot of it probably isn't ideal for your self, like your esteem and your self esteem and stuff. So I found myself doing that with TikTok at the start. And short, I, I actually don't think it was that good a thing that I grew so fast, knowing very little. And I just, it's still happening all over social media like everyone every sort of business person that like sells to pts will tell them they can get them 10k months within like two or three months and it's the same thing that's so bad about telling people how fast they can lose weight pts fall down the exact same rabbit hole as they're trying to not teach their clients to do it's the exact same thing and it plays on their they think they don't have the insecurities that their weight loss clients do, but they do with their business and they just fall into the exact same trap. And short form content for me just breaks my brain. See, when I watch it, I don't learn anything. I can't, like, I don't, well, we're going to get into that, like how I muted everyone, what it's actually done for me. But I, I don't scroll anymore. But see if I do ever, like, because I still find myself on TikTok the odd time. Can't remember a single thing. And it, make, it feels disgusting every time I do it. See, see the scrolling movement? Grim. I hate it. I hate it so much. I hated making short form content. I hated... I hated putting stuff out there where I was like, there's nothing to learn from what I just posted. But I just came across quite aggressive and slagged something off so I know I'll get a hundred thousand views and I might get some followers from it and then they might find something where I have taught them something. It's shite, like it's pure shite. It's why I don't like calling people out and stuff like that as well. I maybe have done it once or twice this year, once I think, but that type of content just doesn't feel good for me. I'd short form content in general, see like flashy 30 seconds, top three tips. I think I'm, I've wiped my hands of it. I don't like making it. I'd rather focus on something else. And if it don't feel good, it don't feel good. So you know that famous quote, comparison is the thief of joy. I've heard a lot of people saying it, like it's resurfacing quite a lot. And I I don't know if you've noticed, but I'm a thought man. And half of this podcast is just me thinking about my thoughts out loud. And sometimes they give me really good ideas for content because I say things in ways that it's been I've been I've been thinking the thoughts, but I haven't been speaking the thoughts yet. And then sometimes I get them out there. Sometimes they come out fantastically, sometimes they come out and a riddle and the listener is probably like, This guy has just fucking lost his head. So with comparison, right, I think the problem with social media is the comparisons we make are subconscious. We don't know we are comparing ourselves to other people, which is why I think it's so important to protect yourself. I don't think you actually have control over your thoughts when you see something that has been designed in a way to make it look like something is better than than what it is like we're like we can't conceptualize that fucking hell big word didn't even dictionary that one like we can't look at something and objectively go because this is what this is the logic right this is the the rationale behind what i'm trying to say but we are not smart enough to be able to do this so when we look at what people are posting on social media, right? We and I've got better at this over the years, but we we'll use two examples. I hate always using fitness examples, right? But say you see someone with a six pack on holiday, what you don't see is the twelve weeks of avoiding food, avoiding going out, avoiding really doing anything, being really irritable 
people around them not enjoying their company, them having zero laughs in order to get that picture. Now, you wouldn't take all of that to have that picture, but you want the picture and you are jealous of whatever the six pack or them looking good in holiday that's not even talking about what they may be done with the picture how long they spent taking the pictures they might have spent two or three hours taking pictures that day and that's the best one they could find they still edited it um i'm not even really talking about like the whole topic of like fitness influencers i'm bored of that subject in general but i'm just using it as an example but you don't see all the you just take one aspect of someone's life but there's been 10 negative aspects for them to get that positive one that you wouldn't take and you would take your own life over it every single day of the week you would take you if you would take your past 12 weeks over their 12 weeks you shouldn't really be jealous of their outcome i know when i see people like I'm tell I'll tell you one example that's something I've been fighting, right? Don't know how I'm... so and this is probably an ego thing. I love stand up comedy, right? And I always like I've got wee fucking notes on my app that are like jokes and they're definitely gash, right? But I've always had this thing that I like what I try it. And I probably never will try it. But I get jealous of people doing stand up and being good at it and i'm like ah that looks class that looks so like i i think i maybe have the same type of brain as someone who does stand-up comedy like the way i like look at everyone's psychology why people do things like if you listen to my podcast i'm like breaking i'm really trying to break down the way people why people do things maybe why they're negative and stuff and also weird things people do and then I'll be a weird freak about it. I'm not saying I'm like a fucking hilarious stand-up comedian, but I'm saying that's my brain works quite similar. And like the way I podcast is me breaking down the same things they would do, just probably not as um, articulate and with less punchlines. But I'm like, I want to do that. But now the the longer i'm on the earth and the longer i've been on social media i go right so for them to get where they are they didn't just stand up in that stage and have that presence and be able to come up with those jokes until five six seven eight ten fifteen years of doing that in shitty clubs and living on people's sofas or at least in their parents house and being skint for 10 years and I've done that life and I don't want, and I couldn't possibly spend 10 more years of my life being skint. So I can't really be jealous of like the fact they're up on stage making everybody laugh, even though I am, even though I absolutely would love to be in that position and my ego would love it. And I, yeah, and I might just stop recording right now and start living that life. But that's the way you have to look at things, because I wouldn't take, I wouldn't take that road they've got to get there. But even even though it's not on social media, we can do it with things like that. But that, I think that's the way you have to talk to yourself. You have to protect yourself from these things. So it's so subconscious, right? So see, every day if you're sitting fucking scrolling and you're literally just seeing the 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 top best thing in someone's life all the time. You're just saying, all right, their house is nicer than mine. Uh, their dog is less fucking fried than mine. Their shoes look better than mine. Uh, fuck, their holiday was better than mine. Uh, fuck, like that. Why, is, why are their shoes £30 cheaper than when I bought them? You know what I mean? Like, you're just literally taking the best of something all the time and you don't even know you're doing it. So you need to protect yourself from it. So protect protecting yourself is like who you follow like you have to take responsibility for it you can't just blame social media you need to be on there and be like choosing who you follow the reason i have everyone muted is because for you pages don't you can't control what comes up now so 
I try to get away from anything that I can't control what comes up at all. I want it off my phone. Um, even stories and stuff like that. Dude, you don't gain anything from watching stories. I can't even... Ex- I have not missed not watching everyone's stories. There's been not one single thing that I have missed. And see if I really need to know about it, someone tells me. See if it's gossip and somebody puts something really weird on their story. People tell me. Because when you do really weird stuff, people tell people. Um, so yeah, we need we need to protect ourselves, which is what I'm going to get into with the whole mutant people. So I was in London when I decided that I was going to mute the full of my Instagram. So I always had an icky feeling every time I watched stories, especially stories, funnily enough, because like people just post like their dinner, post a beer whatever even like pts and stuff i just don't care what any of them are posting and like jen that's not a criticism like you don't you probably don't care what other people are posting it's just addictive it's just something to do it's just something to do when you're in the queue of thing of whatever um and it feels shit so i when i don't want to unfollow everyone because then everyone will think i'm an arsehole and I don't want everyone to think I'm an arsehole. I want everyone to love me. Anyway, so Instagram wouldn't let me mute more than, I think, whatever, 20, 30 people at a time. I don't know if you've seen the social dilemma. If you're listening to this podcast and you, you're sort of, re- some of this stuff is resonating with you, I would go and watch the social dilemma. It's just a Netflix documentary about the people who actually worked with within facebook and they were just trying to get it more and more more and more people on it to make more money and make people spend more time on it aka make it more addicting don't, don't know how much they knew the, what they were actually doing to the world but that was what they were doing it's quite scary but it makes me think they do know what they were doing because basically why was i not allowed to just go f- why are you not allowed to just have like a list of your followers and just click mute all i had to mute everyone individually and ev- after i muted 20 25 people say it would say it would just stop letting me do it and it wouldn't even say you've reached capacity how many people you can mute or whatever today it would just like i would mute someone and then go back on their thing and they wouldn't be muted it would just stop letting me do it which is something that you would never know about until you've done it. But they've set up the, all of these apps like that so that you can't do things like this. Um, and I, we'll get into some more things in a second. But So I spent about two or three weeks muting absolutely everyone. Um, I think I just went through my followers list and then I would just do it like that. And then uh, I'd honestly be there for whatever 10 20 minutes a day muting everyone posting stories posting stories i am um, and my home feed ah uh, you're not gonna be able to see it but anyway it's literally just my oh, my home feed is just my posts as in you just scroll and there'll be a sponsor there'll just be my last post my second last post sponsor my third post it's just me the top of my instagram where stories are they aren't they're kind of like dimmed out i wish they were just weren't there at all because i can still click on them but i can't if i click on one story i can't like click 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 and then it goes on to the next person it's just theirs that and it because the next person is muted it doesn't come up so i never like i watch quite a lot of stories and it's fucking infuriating because i don't want to watch any but if someone that i know or like ha- they haven't posted a story in a while and like my brain's just like oh click on that what are they up to because you can't control that i click on it even though it's like not got a red ring out it's dimmed and i click on it i watch that one story i'm like fuck did i need to see there in tenerife for i don't give a fuck that's one of my worst fears by the way it's been six months in a new relationship and going to tenerife that makes me physically physically ill why does everyone do that? Take out that picture in the front of that fucking mountain and then a year down the line, poster fucking... Your key. 
but your new house is for the door. It's not for my phone screen, okay? Let's get some things clear. That key is made specifically to slot into that door. It is not picturesque. I do not need to see the, the brick layout of your house. I do not need to see your front drive. I do not need to see your new car in the background. And I do not need to see your couple a picture. With the keys, use them for the door, you know. Anyway, I sound like a 70-year-old man again. The 60s were great. Remember when everyone was getting high and we didn't have social media? Those were the days. Anyway. The Beatles were class. So, where was I? Right, mutant. The mutant everyone thing. Oh, yeah. Also, when I watch stories, my brain goes, let's see who viewed my story. And then whatever ones have read, people who have read rings around them, that means they've posted a story. Sometimes I start watching their stories like that because my brain has figured out little ways. But the good thing is I do no scrolling anymore. I never go on the, the re- you know, there's a Reels page. Honestly, I, like, it's in the middle, isn't it? Oh, no, it's bottom right. I can't stop making I don't go on that. Genuinely, I never do. Sometimes I go on TikTok, but the good thing about that is because I don't go on it on Instagram, quite a lot of the t- time I click on TikTok and I know what I'm doing straight away and I just come off it. Um, so I don't really scroll. And I I talked about this on a reel as well. Like I was speaking about therapy to someone the other day. See, with therapy, quitting alcohol... And this muting everyone on social media, none of these make you feel good like the next day. But I gen like I the only way I know that I'm mentally firing better and my perspective is better and on things is because I talk to other people. Like I'll talk to PTs and they'll be like, Oh man, I just feel like everyone like there'll be a year in and they'll be like, oh, I just feel like everyone makes more money than me at this point and I'm like, go Go around 10 gyms around your area and you'll see how everyone is absolutely skint. I like, ah, but you done well. And I was like, I ah, but you watch me on social media. <laughs> you know? You fell for the Prince Harry. Yeah, you fell for the, the falling neck. So, you know, like, I really think that we don't understand how subconscious these thoughts actually are and when you block them all even the it's so subconscious how much better you are like you don't feel better but you are better and you like you're i'm maybe consistently three percent better in a three percent better mood or my average is like do you know what i mean i have or i'm or i've had 10 less bad moods this year that, or I just feel 10% better about my business and how it's doing. Like, it's so small, but it's so worth it. That's so, so, so worth it. I've seen so many, and like, so many PTs are like, oh, I'm not getting the engagement I used to and stuff like that because they're just watching other people getting more likes. And I'm like, that person getting more likes could well could well be absolutely skint. I, my, I put it in perspective this way. When I, the least amount of money I've made in a year is when I've grown the most on social media. Because that's what I was focused on. Fo- I was focused on growing followers on social media and I had no idea about business or getting clients or coaching people properly, actually getting good at Like I was doing all those things as in like I was trying to learn how to do all of that. But like I was growing on social media and people must probably thought I was doing really well when I lived in London I had a, a nice flat that was absolutely bumming me but I looked like I was doing well you know I looked like and even though I, I don't really I don't I don't play in things like that much when I look back on it it, w- it would have looked like I was doing class when I was in London probably but I was uh, I was living in hell because London is hell so just one I feel like going down a right 
thing just now where I want to be as honest as possible about everything because I actually think it helps people more. And when you help people more, like you get clients anyway. I don't need to sell my services because people are like, this guy just says what's on his mind and tells you what's actually going to happen. Doesn't try to sell you on anything. He just, but then again, and you know, I sometimes lie about things like Prince Harry. So, uh, if you want to try the whole mutant thing, one of the best things I've ever done is paying the arse to set up with a with a home. But even if you just went started muting, like even if you got that mate from school that does your head in that you don't actually care about, but you see her every now and then, and she's like, "Did you see my story?" Fuck her, mute, get her muted. You don't need to see her at holiday to Tenerife because Tenerife is gash. The only place that's worse is Benidorm, and I'm still raging that somebody stole my phone on the beach when I was steaming. Okay, so this might be a wee bit of a controversial topic because the man in question is getting a, a lot of fame and a lot of fame within my industry because he made a lot of his money through launching gyms and a lot of PTs are taking his advice on selling and he does, I listened to his podcast with Chris Williamson um, I can't remember what it was, 25 life lessons or something. And I actually really enjoy about 80 to 90% of what Alex Hormozzi says. Uh, if you don't know who Alex Hormozzi is, pe- people that are listening to this that are more uh, on on the client side of things are looking to improve their their diet and their nutrition and their fitness and lifting weights. Maybe are less likely to know who he is, but any PT I'm pretty sure has has heard of Alex Hormozzi at this point. So his whole thing is sales, really is it's sales um, and showing people an offer and trying to like trying to make your offer better, make your offer better in terms of what you deliver, but also how you present it. Now, even within that, there's some fucking great advice. Like, uh, like so I'm going to talk about some of, uh, like, because the overarching theme of it is I don't agree with it at all, and it's quite negative in terms of weight loss anyway, but then it sprinkles in other things, and it is toxic. So what I really didn't like that he said, right, he always uses weight loss as his analogy or like his topic of choice when he's talking about how to present offers and he always talks about people are always going to choose what is going to get them the result faster so you need to include that in your offer you need to show that this is the offer that is going to get you to the goal you want in the quickest amount of time now the thing about that is a lot of people, right, just take weight loss, for example. A lot of people are cripple, cripplingly unhappy. And that is one of the biggest reasons why they're overweight. And they always think weight loss is going to make them happy. This is why people yo-yo diet. This is, every, like, quite a lot of people who have gained weight have lost at least a percentage of it at one point, then regained it back because of this way of thinking, because of thinking this is the dream and doing it in the quickest amount of time possible is the goal. When actually they need to think about where they are right now isn't that bad. And until they accept that, they'll never lose weight and keep it off. Me, I can get... Not everyone, but I could get 80% of people that come to me, I could get them to lose a lot of weight in 12 weeks. They would fucking hate me, and all I would do is pretty much get them to avoid food for 12 weeks and convince them that to step on the scale quite a lot and do a bit more exercise. But 90% of that 80% would gain it back because... What the fitness industry has always done is instead of helping people with their insecurities, sold to them with 
the the idea to play on their insecurities rather than help them deal with their insecurities so that whole idea of selling people quick results is exactly the reason that these people will rebound so my i think my job as a personal trainer is to get people to see that exactly what i've just outlined is my job so then i can't sell them on that because i would be doing people a disservice and actually giving them more negative outcomes than positive outcomes so for me as a business strategy yeah i could make some quick money but ultimately the people that i've worked with wouldn't be recommending me because they'd be going yeah i've fucking got an eating disorder now you know so when you take that into consideration that's the negative about the way alex homozy promotes things however i've learned loads of different things like i've listened to his offers book i've now probably put on like 10 of his podcasts i don't like call it like i'm not calling him out because there's so many things that he says that's great and he's a really intelligent guy so he, and he's never going to listen to this but you could probably see my point of view with that but i know there's loads of pts that listen to this but he, what he's got me thinking about is so i'm more about teaching people how to lift so now like i've got like a little video that i send people that shows them how my service works like how i can like how i speak to them for whatsapp or whatever and i used to just be showing people maybe like testimonials and stuff but now i'm like if my whole goal is because i think right i get people to lift and focus on lifting so that they're not so focused on the scale so that we can work on shifting their focus to lifting and then that is going to improve their self-worth because they're going to look more into how much they can lift in the gym and build in their routine rather than how much they weigh on the scale i now think about because he talks about you you want to show them the journey they are going to make and what journey you're going to take them through so now i think about well i've got a million videos of people doing an absolutely horrendous goblet squat on the first week of the program because nobody can very rarely can people do a good goblet squat right but then i've got videos of people being a year down the line and smashing out a fantastic back squat and that's the journey like i already know how i'm walking them through that like getting their mobility better then moving them from goblet squat to something else then adding in like bulgarian split squats and then building them up from a back squat elevating their heels for a while when they back squat to work on their ankle mobility and there's plenty of people who want to learn how to lift now and i was like okay right that's fantastic i've never thought about it like that i need to show people how i can teach them how to lift and i have all that evidence and I know that journey and people now when they when I talk to them when they come in for like a free session I'm like right we're doing we're doing a Romanian deadlift a dumbbell Romanian deadlift do you know what we're going to do in six weeks we're going to get you on that barbell to do a barbell Romanian deadlift and then on the third set they start to kind of get the dumbbell one and I'm like right we're going to build up your weights for that and then we're going to put big weights on the barbell Romanian deadlift I'm already telling them about the journey they are going to make so they can get excited about what they're going to learn and it's a healthier thing to learn so even though that started off as a negative thing there's there is actually so much good information from Alex Hormozzi the reason I wanted to point that out is because that is what this industry is filled with like it's all dressed up in different ways this is what i was saying like there's a whole property thing right now as well all over the uk where people are making way more money educating on other people on how to invest in property but they are not really investing in property they are just educating people on property i know people who are social media growth experts the only way they grew their following was from teaching other people how they can grow their following fast if you do these five tips and it's always what alex hermosi is talking about this fast sell that you can reach somewhere fast but see even if 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 there's struggling pts out there if i gave you 40 clients tomorrow like online you wouldn't be able to handle it 
because you've not worked your way up anyway. So like all of, like fast results in anything usually isn't that great. There is times to work hard as fuck. There is elements of being able to like sometimes going to the gym five times a week and really getting into it for a certain type of individual might be better than going three times a week. But most of the time, it's not about doing anything anything fast. Um, and But that's just what marketing is. And I think you need to really protect yourself from sales and marketing and from social media in general. I think it absolutely cooks your brain. Cooks your brain if you think that everyone's leaner and bigger than you and can lift more than you. Cooks your brain if you think PTs are building businesses quicker than you. Um, all of, like all of these ones that are doing communities and stuff within like a year of coaching, most of them, and I can see it, but they'll still keep posting like they aren't, but they're falling on their arse because they've never actually like learned how how actually like keep up a sustainable business. You're not trying to get 200 people in at once because that requires you to be banging on social media all the time, which is very, very, very difficult to do. Um, and you need to be... You need to be able to cover different topics and be able to keep up with the changing of social media all the time. And that needs to be like a real desperate desire to do those things. And not many people have that desperate desire because it's boring. It's really boring. It's really boring to want to know how to make the best type of content for the algorithm all the time. And it, it takes away your personality. It takes away your soul. So, I think I've covered pretty much everything I wanted to cover. Stay away. Like, I'd stay, I, if you're a PT, I, I would hold off on spending money on loads of business coaching. It's just a personal opinion of mine. I really tried to dis- disassociate myself with a lot of people that I could see getting sucked into that. And surround myself with other people that were more about longevity and helping people. Um, and the uh, even though a lot of people are doing better than me business wise, followers wise, and stuff. Maybe this has just been a whole podcast of me trying to make myself feel better about myself. <laughs> but I just don't know, man. I think it's all bollocks. That's my personal opinion. I think everyone's full of shit, and I. I know they're full of shit because I've been full of shit at points in my life and I, 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 I fully know, know that it doesn't mean anything. So I hope you enjoyed that rather negative dour podcast. Catch you in the next episode. Any ratings would be fantastic. F- fill my ego. Rate the podcast on Spotify. Watch all my stories. Mute everyone on your Instagram apart from me so that I get more story views, more likes, more followers and that i get to the top of the tree and i can all sell you on my mentorship very soon that will make you 10 grand a month if you don't want to be a pt don't worry whatever you want to do i'll make you 10 grand a month thank you very much see you in the next episode next tuesday catches after thank you see you there goodbye